Hello everyone, my name is Neil Mustic. Welcome to uh, not really a tutorial, but a guide in how to use the basics of Unity. I've been asked this on one of my videos, so uh, I might as well do a short introduction. So Unity, first thing that you need to do is of course download it. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that because if you want to get into Unity, you should at least know how to download this program. Of course, with my computer, it's having a little delay. I have no idea why, but it is. But yeah, so when you click on Unity, it's probably somewhere here. Let's see, Unity, there we go, Unity. I uh, attached it to my little uh, English word missing here, but yeah. So if you click on it, you get to see a screen where it says to give in your email address and your password. So this means if it's the first time that you're using Unity, you need to go to the website, make an account that you can use for free. It will also ask you, let's, uh, let's sign out. So you give in your email address and your password once you have it and as it says remember me i do that you can also work offline but i'm going to sign in and uh, then you get this i think there's also a screen where it asks you do you want to use it for professional purposes medium professional purposes and uh, your own purposes it will also ask you if your company for which you're using it uh, earns above 50 or 100,000, around 50,000 or below 50,000. If you don't have a company yet, like I said, if it's the first time that you use it, you tap on the lowest figure. So yeah, you get this. Maybe you can go and look at the get started video or you can follow this. What you can do is, this will be empty for you. You can click on new, give in your project name, uh, tap on if it's a 3D or a 2D game, uh, give in the location where you want it to be built. For me, it's going to be on my desktop, like you can see um, here, 2D platformer, the map is right here on my desktop. So, uh, you made your map, your project, and then this is going to happen. It's going to take a while to load in everything, but then this is going to happen. You get this screen or you get, where is it? Maybe something like this, or that's the default one that I use, or something like this, depending on what you like to use, uh, it will pop up like this. I'm going to go back to the default because I like it like this. And well, this is basically Unity. What you have, let's go over the things up here. Closing, oh wait, putting it into a box that you can make smaller. It interacts, your entire thing will uh, change if you make it smaller, as you can see. And a full screen. <clears throat> let's go from left to right so file this is basically let's say you made a scene like i did here with the three little thingies my uh three little fences that a friend of mine made who i'm working with if i want to save that i can go to save scene as and you can give in the name of the scene yes i want to replace it and it will pop up here. So what you can do in your assets is right click on it, create folder scenes. That's a, a basic thing. So I'm going to drag that one in there. You also have save project. For example, you made something, but you don't want to save it. You can also do save project. This will save everything that you did in, uh, what am I saying? Let's say I I've been working on this scene, I'm going to another scene, it's going to ask you to save it. And uh, it's best you do or nothing in that scene will be saved. But let's say you're working in here. 
uh, you've got a script, you want to put it on, on something, you want to make a prefab, that's not going to interact with your scene. That's all internal, that's not in your game window. So uh, then you do save project and it will save that entire project in your folder that you used for Unity for this project. Uh, the build settings, basically when you tap on this, you can see the games that you're, well, what you're building. For example, I have one scene. Uh, for now, my game is empty. So I've got one scene. I'm going to add current scene and it's uh, the test scene. It's going to be in here. Basically, um, let's, let's make an easy example. You've got three scenes. Let's uh, close this for a second. Let's save scene as startup. Okay, and finish. Finish. There we go. So I've saved this scene three times now. I'm going to put it in my scenes folder and I'm going to go to my build settings. Now, as you can see, my test scene is in the first position. Finish scene is in there as well. I'm going to go to my scenes list. And as I can see, my startup isn't in there. So I'm going to just drag it in. But now the order is wrong. What Unity thinks now is, okay, I need to load up the test scene first, then the finish scene, and then the startup scene. This is wrong. You first need to go, you need to drag this up. So you get your startup first, your scene, basically your main menu scene, then your in-game scenes, and then your finish. Uh, in-game scenes, I mean, let's say you get 10 levels, you put all 10 levels, from 1 to 10 in here and uh, with scripting you can choose okay I want to go to that scene I want to go to that scene blah 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 that's how that works the web player is basically uh, I'm, I don't have this tool inserted yet but the web player basically means you can put your game on the internet like a flash game or something like that PC, Mac and Linux this is what most people are using if you tap on development build, you can uh, you can choose things like uh, what shall I say development build 0 0.1. The next build that you do is 0 0.2, and so on and so forth. That's how the development build works. iOS, I think everyone knows what iOS is. TVOS, I have no idea what this is. Android, basically iOS and Android are for phones. Tizen, I have no idea what Tizen is, but all of these are basically extensions. Let's say you want you to have your game on the Xbox. I don't have the license because I, it's, it's a lot of money. But yeah, you can buy licenses for PS4, PS Vita, all of these, and uh, put your game on the PS3, PS4, if you have the right controls for that. Google Store still the same thing webgl i have no idea how that works and samsung tv that's basically if you want to make a game that you can play on your television so uh, we're going to go for the pc version and if we kill uh if you press build this is going to happen it's going to ask me how do you want your file name to be in this case let's name it tester tester.exe save and it's going to build that. So it's basically building the game the way you set it up. I didn't add in any scripts to go on and to stop, but yeah, this is what it's doing right now. It's building my game. And done. Okay, so now it's opening my game. And as you can see, we've got the little Unity logo. I'm going to show you where you can change this. But if we select it, you get this screen. I'm going to do windowed because it's going to be messed up. I'm going to select my resolution if I can find it. My resolution isn't here. That sucks. But yeah, let's let's say this one. And I've got only one display at the moment. You can also choose your graphics quality. I'm going to go for fantastic because I have a really good uh, graphics card. And if you press play, you can see first the logo pops up because I'm using the personal edition and this is my first scene so basically the startup scene 
you can put up your buttons and things to navigate through the entire game. So that's how the build works. Close. If you do build and run, it's going to go and do that immediately. So it's not adding anything new in, it's just going to start up immediately. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do, let's see, if I tap on development build, if I give in tester and a place, I think there's supposed to be a button that's going to pop up. Well, not really a button. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, access granted and play. Normally it's going to say that, if, yeah, here, it's saying development build. So that's that. The next thing, I'm going to tap this off again. Player settings. And now, as you can see, you get your player settings. So basically what this means is you give in the name of your company, you give in the name of your product and uh, the default cursor. Well, basically you can choose what kind of uh, arrow thingy you have and the default icon that's basically as you could see yeah i closed it so the little uh, unity logo that you can see up in the corner that's uh that represents this so if you choose something else let's see if i have something that i can use let's let's use this one for now so i'm using that one and now if i do no if i do a build replace i think the logo is going to change if not it's going to be in game yeah so as you can see the logo went from the basic unity logo to the one that uh, i added to it what else is there in player settings so the cursor that's basically let's do something stupid with cursor let's add in a ball build and run build and run Luckily, this goes kind of fast. The bigger your game is, the longer this will take. So normally, the cursor should be a little ball. Yeah, you can see it because it's hidden behind the square. But yeah, this is basically the ball that, uh, that appears. Okay, so next thing, I'm going to undo these. Because if, uh, if I finish a game, that's going to mess up everything. So basically your icon is like a little logo to your game. The hotspot is where where is the little pointy thing that you use for clicking. If I do this, nothing is going to happen. If I do this, something is happening. So that's basically your hotspot. So the next thing. Resolution and presentation. Basically, uh, you saw the little dialogue screen at the... At at the start, that's because it's enabled. If you, if I disable this and I do build and run, it's a lot of build and runs. You can see that I don't get that startup screen. The next thing, um, oops, I'm going to enable that again. Resizable window, that's, well, everyone knows what that is. Uh, we're not using the Mac, so that doesn't matter. These guys, you can, play with it as much as you want visible in the background so basically visible in the background means if you go into a different program you can still see your game playing in the background for example if i open this you can still see my unity but uh it's not doing anything so that's basically what visible in the background means uh okay so you can give in your own aspect ratios for which you're making the game. I normally go for my standard thingy because I've, I've got a pretty decent computer, a very good graphics card, so I go for other and I give in my own um, my own resolution icon. So basically, if you make a standalone game, so not for Steam or anything, you can change. Uh, you can choose your icons. And these will be visible on your desktop in the given size. The next thing, splash image. Well, that's basically the same thing. I'm going to tap this off again. 
and other settings. So you can change your color uh, stuff, you can change your rendering path. Uh, depending on what kind of game you're making, this is important or this is not important. Uh, which configuration I use, mono 2x. Let's say you have another scripting program, you can change this to that scripting program, but I have mono development, uh, mono develop, so not going to happen. Uh, basically, these are all the same preload shaders, depending on, again, depending on what kind of game you're making, that's important or it isn't. Okay, so that's uh, the player settings. Next to that, there's nothing more to learn about this screen. So the edit, basically undo things you did, copy paste, control C, control V kind of stuff, uh, delete, everyone knows what these things do. The assets, basically you can create all of these, like when you go in here and you do right click, you can get the same thing. This is just a little bit slower because you have to go back and forward the entire time. This is just click and there we go. Uh, import packages. These are the standard packages that Unity provides for you. You can also do custom package. So let's say you bought a package, you can just put it somewhere, drag it in, and it will be applied to your game. Export package, let's say you make a package, like uh, you, you want to uh, export this because this is your basic setup and people maybe want to buy, uh, want to buy it, you can export this package uh, with the games and stuff, export. <laughs> Game objects, so the things you want to make. Uh, some things, maybe some people would like to make things using Unity, but most people will use something else like uh, Blender or something. This is basically important for the audio, the lighting, and uh, the UI. Yeah, particle systems and camera as well. Components, this is where you can find many different things. In the game, we'll get to this. For example, if I select this one and I go to component, physics, and I do box collider, it's going to make a little box around it. Basically, the box collider says, this is the furthest the player can go. He can't go in here because the box collider is blocking that. I'm going to undo that. So that's the components. You can also have scripts, networking. So yeah, with time we'll get to that. The hierarchy, that's basically everything you see here. Let's say you, you want to add in music. You can, where is it? I saw it. Audio mixer, you can add in the audio mixer put in songs here and start mixing. I want to undo that. Can I undo you? Close that, okay. So things like that. We're going to use this as well at a later stage. The help, if you want to find online help. There's also one important, well, not really important thing. Where was it? Do, 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 do. Asset store. So. This basically takes you to the store, to the internet store where you can buy the assets. Like for now, horse animations minus 50 uh, percent, 15 euro, uh, dollars instead of 30. So all the assets you need, like RPG engine and stuff like that, easy movie textures, blah, 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 blah. All of those you can find in the asset store. Of course, most of them you'll have to pay for. So now let's get into Unity itself. Let's uh, show you guys what all these screens do. That was strange. You should be deleted. I, I, I don't want you here. Okay, but it doesn't matter. So this is your scene where you drag in stuff. Let's drag in something. Let's drag in a house. So this is the scene where you work in. As you can see, I'm going to save this scene, save, and I'm going to go to another scene, scenes, startup, and as you can see, the house is gone. So these are the, this is your working field, basically. And when you press game, you can see through the camera, you can see the little 
fence thingies. This is my camera, you can also move it if you want. And that's going to be the next thing to talk about, moving objects. If you select your camera, excuse me, if you select your camera, you can see it's a very wide screen because I set it to my, uh, my field of view. And if you drag it in, you see that it moves closer as well. Uh, you can just normally drag it, but the thing that I did was this blocking dragging. That's basically control and then using the arrows. For those who use Blender, keep in mind the Y axis is going upwards, the X axis is going left to right, and the Z axis is uh, back and forward. Depending on how you look at it, it's going to change. Now, one little cool thing about Unity, uh, you saw me make, some of you saw me make the little video on uh, on all my assets, where are they, numbers. So these assets, if you want to do modular, modular building, it's a good thing to tap up here on the Y axis and you go to top view. And this makes it a lot easier to drag and uh, work with this program. So I'm going to put this one. Now let's say you want to make a second one. You select the object that you want to duplicate. Control C, Control V. And it's duplicated. You also want to turn it. Well, up here, there, there are shortcuts to do this. You can rotate by going to these two little arrows and you get this entire ball of rotation stuff. Basically, the green one is rotating like this, but you can also do it up here manually. Let's say you're not sure in which direction you should turn. So you do something like this, but you want to have it completely uh, vert horizontally. You just give in minus 90 and look at that. So back to the dragging and you can drag it where you want it to be. This one is scaling. Let's show you guys. So scaling on that axis, I'm going to keep it at one. And this, I have no idea what it does. I think it's like bounding boxes on, on a, no, a center point for a 2D game, I guess. This one is just basically selecting stuff and, oops, doing nothing. So this is some sort of navigation through your game that you made. Oops, let's go to the Y axis again. Okay, so that's that. Now, as you can see, I did this. I get selected to five and default pops up. This default is basically your material. So if I put on, if I want to give it a new color, I can go like this. And as you can see, this default says red now. This is also the default uh, mesh renderer and stuff like that because you can script these in and they do change. Now, let's say I don't, I'm not sure if I want to put it here. I can just select this and drag it on top of default. And there we go. If you have like one, you have like 1000 thingies and one in here is a uh, needs to be changed and you do know the exact name, like it's a specific thing, you can just find it in your inventory, in your hierarchy, select it and drag your color on top of that. To add new stuff to that, you just go in here in your project folder thingies, you select what you want and you drag it into the hierarchy and it's going to start at 0. Uh, 0, 0, 0. These are your coordinations, your position, your rotation and your scale. Basically scale, if I go, if I put it on two, it's going to be wider on the X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Rotation, the same thing. Uh, well, rotation, you can rotate in every direction you want. And position, if I give it a five and two, it's going to take it up with the Y axis. So two, and as you can see, it moved. So that's how that works. Uh, 
yeah, your assets folder, that's kind of the same thing. Now, let's say we've got an entire layout for the ground. We can just go in here, create an empty, and it's on top of that object. You can just drag it out and pull it down to not have it inside that one. It was here. If I close this, my empty was gone. So I'm going to drag it out. By uh, clicking it again when it's lit, you can change the name. I'm going to make this test mpt mpt e test mpt, and I'm going to drag in all my numbers. So you just hold down your shift to select them all, like basically everything, and you put them on top of this test mpt. So you can hide those because if you have like 10,000 things, <laughs> that's going to be very messy. Now I know this test empty is going to be all my ground thingies. I can also make one for walls and that's going to be wall empty or something. Uh, then a last thing, let's say you're making a game, you've got everything done, everything is uh, fine for you. I want to go back to my normal top view. It won't give it to me. Okay, it doesn't matter. So you you get all these things and you know I'm going to reuse them. For example, you made a house, you put a texture on top of it, blah, 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 blah. You can go down here. You can make a folder called, uh, where is it? Folder prefabs. And you can basically drag this in into that folder. What this does is, now I have an object that's all these floor things. If I drag it in here, you can see all my floor things are in, are just one entire thing. So that's how the prefab works. Uh, with time, when we get to that point, I'm going to explain it a lot better. But yeah, that's another thing. Uh, what else do I need to explain? Materials, so you, you know that you have materials because you need to put a material on top of items So the materials the ones that I'm using emission. I'm going to use as well for some things, but uh, The materials are actually very very powerful in the new unity in in the previous one I only had the, the coloring texture and that was it. There was no lighting no uh, height mapping no bit mapping nothing so uh, the albedo, that's basically your texture. This metallic that you see, if I press specular, it's going to change to specular. That's the lighting that goes on top of it. If you have a metal object, you use standard. You get the metallic thingy. You can change the smoothness of your object, the color of your shading, the color of your main objects. Let's see if I can make it blue. Okay, so blue and with the the lighting, it's going to be purple for now. But if I change this, let's see if I can change this. So now it's red. And now it's going to go to more purpley because of the lighting. So yeah, blue, purple, red. So that's how that works. And I, I did something, re I really messed it up. So I'm going to put it back on that. Uh, your normal map is, well, normal mapping, height map, height map, and occlusion map is for how your light falls on top of the object. Your emission map, that's actually something pretty cool. Let's see if I can uh, get me an object. Yes, I see one. This. So I'm going to do a little bit of no uh, light mapping on this little thingy. Uh, I think it's, or was it? With text, house, I, I should go to fence, <laughs> stone fence, okay. So the stone fence, it has no material because it's the wrong one. Where did I put it? Blue, no, it's it wasn't blue, was it blue? Okay, so blue is uh, this texture. To make sure I just put it on top of that. 
on the emission map, if I put this on the emission, you can see it lights up white. Now, I can make it darker, and as you can see, it becomes darker. Also, as you can see, the lines, the black lines, are not being lit up. It's only the white parts that are going to be lit up. If I put it on red, you can still see the lines. Black, no, no lighting. Same with blue. You can do this with any color you want. Everything that's white on this map, on this texture, is going to be lit up. What I can do is uh, put this on baked, so it's going to bake that color so it's always the same but i don't want that for most of my games i want to have it like flashing or something and you can't do that if you're using the the baked option the detail mask is basically like a little detailing of your object and secondary maps that's uh well you have your normal texture so the basic uh take this off again yeah, I don't need you. There. So the basic texture is this one, the one that you see right now. And with the detail albedo, you can give in more little details if you want. For example, you're making a human, then you have your base texture, and you'll have like uh, this, the little bumps of the skin and stuff will be in the secondary map and the second normal map. For example, uh, you're making an African looking guy, then you, you'll use a, a very dark, and this is not racist at, a racist at all, you're, using a, you're going to use a very dark albedo and normal map. If you're making an Asian guy, it's going to be, well, I, I would say yellowish because of the cartoons, but you know, you guys know what I mean. You're going to use a different detail albedo map. Basically, base form, and this is skin tone, or whatever you want to call it in that case. This is the basic thing of uh, Unity. I hope it was helpful. To move around, I'll do the hotkeys to finish. To move around, left click is selecting objects. Click and drag with the box. The mouse button, scrolling out, is going up. Scrolling in, is zooming in. If you hold it down, you can move around on your field. And the right button is rotation. So those are basically the only things that I that I use in Unity to get around in the in the the settings and stuff like that. I hope this this was kind of useful to you guys, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.